first time I came, I thought, well, I'm a terrible singer. Uh, and during the week, you, there's an element of suffering that takes place for the individual. Mm. The music, it, it seems impossible, and yet you sing it. The chant, it, it seems incomprehensible, and yet you do it. Uh, but you leave, and you find yourself back now as an individual, or maybe a, two or three people in your own parish environment, and suddenly you, you make a remarkable discovery. You've improved. That's right, that's right. In fact, a fellow in my chant choir told me at lunch today that he had been studying the uh, Liber Usualis and various books about chant for years, and until he reached the conclusion of this week, he never felt as though he was able to sing a chant of, of any difficulty uh, with real confidence and tomorrow he's singing the gradual for Sunday. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. the gradual yeah, yeah. with his choir, of course, yeah. of forty men, fifty men. Right. But he he was telling me how important that was. That here I am. I'm I'm going to sing Sunday's gradual. People too who have little training in music at all, and they're afraid to come because they think, well, there's going to be all these professional musicians there. Oh, How can I possibly producer. get up and sing along with them? And I often think, especially in the case of chant, if you have no formal training in music, yeah. it's like a child learning a language for the first time. Sure. Like a one-year-old, two-year-old starts to speak. Absolutely. You know, you learn. You learn the chant. If you already have an education in music, you will bring that. You can inform your, your, your new lessons in chant with what you already know, sure. but you might do, have to do a lot of translating in your mind. Absolutely. Again, I think uh, you know that it's been said that it's like immersion. You know, immersion is the best way to learn a language. Yep. And so, some people, people who have never had any experience, um, they fare fairly well. I'd say very well at the colloquium. colloquium and seeing real friendships and collegiality and there's, there's something quite graceful. Well, you know what, Daniel, it's very interesting to me that people come to the colloquium expecting or worried that maybe we're just a kind of a crappy bunch, you know, that we're just uh, upset that things aren't quite the way they were in the old days or something. Well, the truth is that most people uh, involved in CMA, we, we, don't, we don't even know what the old days were, <laughs> you know, I mean, most of us were born uh, during or after the council. Uh, so, uh, in any case, at the culture of our events, you don't have any of the bitterness that people sometimes ascribe to this, you know, but um, everybody is exuberant and happy and, and hopeful and, as you say, working together uh, as a team to try to do something in whatever small way we possibly can at our local parishes or at the national level or in any other way to assist in bringing music to the Mass that's, that's sacred, that's beautiful, that's truly universal. If we lose a couple of altos before the Kyrie, we're not going to be happy. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, drive me right on. <laughs> They look at it and go, they go, I saw this at the colloquium. Several people who came in the chapel, it was very touching. They, you could tell that they were palpably moved by the music. And it was some, uh, genuine beauty, not, not some artificial thing, but something beautiful. And of course, the other beautiful thing really about the colloquium, which was really very special, and you could see how saliently, uh, in a tangible way, beautiful the music is, is that you have these friends and people who come back year after year. And these, Friendships are, are really quite strong, these bonds, based upon this mutual love of this great repertoire. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's part of what the CMA strives to do. We try to become something like an, an infrastructure of support for these people who, who desperately need it. They need to know that other people are uh, engaged in the same project. They need to know about their frustrations, about the difficulties, and how to overcome them, how to find the workaround. To, and there always are difficulties in, in, in the area of church music. It was enforcing the idea that I'm not alone, 
there are other people who feel like me. They want, want to do the same thing. Maybe you know, most of the folks that are here at a higher skill level than me. You know, I'm just, I just sing music. But that and being able to work with professionals because my skill level isn't as good as it should be, particularly when it comes to polyphony. This is, like I say, the, really the only chance I get to do chant and polyphony.